So sprinting technique is always compromised when you're tight. And in this video, I'm going to explain why and what to do about it. So when you're actually on the start line of your race, that you're relaxed and focused and calm, and you've got the best tools in line to run your fastest time. So what I mean is uh, sprinting, technique, sprinting technique is compromised by tightness. Normally when we're trying to add sprinters, runners of 400 meters, we're trying to improve our sprinting technique by physical actions, by the placement of our arms, by our arm action. But this is all, it's less important than the actual state of how you are as you run. That is going to bring about the best sprinting technique for you. You both, as a, an athlete, have got your own individual sprinting technique and you need to find it and you find it by like relaxing and finding your own kind of calm state that is what you do to improve your sprinting technique and the other things in terms of the physical actions like the arm action trying to improve it is superfluous it's kind of frivolous it's not as important it's out on the kind of boundaries of the borders of what to do it's not getting to the crux of the problem so how does tightness compromise sprinting technique? Well, what does tightness do to us first? What does, when you're tight, what does that do to us physically as an, as an athlete when we're sprinting? It compromises our stride length, which is a massive component of sprinting speed because we more, you're tighter, you're tighter and less flexible. So if you're tight and less flexible, you're actually gonna have a shorter stride length. You're going to have a less power output because they're less, less elastic energy, because a lot of your power is built up by elastic energy, uh, built up by the forces you do when you run. Your endurance is compromised as well because there's more energy leakage. So what I mean by energy leakage, there's more muscles in your, there's muscles in your body that shouldn't be working as hard that is actually sapping your energy. And when you sap your energy, your endurance is compromised. You won't, you're not able to sustain the speed you need in, even the 100 meters, the 200 meters, or the 400 meters. And the fourth thing as well is because you're putting yourself at greater risk of injury. injury sorry. So how do, why is this the case? Well, the problem is when you're tight, you're stressed and anxious. And stress and anxiety actually, it kind of smudges the connection between mind and muscle. In my Be Activated treatment, I, when I'm testing athletes for muscle activation, I go through a series of tests in my, in my Be Activated treatment, and they should be able to hold the tests as athletes, but they can't. And once I've dropped the body into a relaxed state, I've done through breathing uh, uh, techniques, through other activation techniques, they're able to hold the muscle test. So when dropping the body into a, uh, taking the stress and anxiety away, and dropping the body into a parasympathetic relaxed state, the muscles are able to fire under the brain's command. But when you're stressed and anxious, your, your, the, the connection between mind and muscle is just smudged and it's confused and it just doesn't work. And what happens then is that it causes other muscles to compensate for those muscles that are switched off. So what it can be is extreme when I do muscle tests on, the, on, active, uh, on athletes that their jaw and their jaw muscles and their neck muscles are doing the work of the hips because the hips won't function on their own. Once I tighten up, get them to tighten up, and they can uh, I kind of clench their teeth, their hip muscles start to fire and they start to do it. That's a big, massive compensation pattern. And you can understand when you sprint and you've got a tight jaw, that's possibly the, a compensation pattern that's making you tight. And that's going to compromise your sprinting technique. There's no amount of just ch physical change you put in sprint in, in training that's going to change that because your sprinting technique is dictated by how you feel, how you are as a person, how you feel about the environment you are in, and how you feel you're, as you are in that, on, that, on that block start. So it's really, sprinting technique is really dictated by how you feel. Now, what, one of the things you've got to understand is there's different triggers and different stimuli, as it were, in your day-to-day -day life that triggers this anxiety, and you need to find it in yourself. And a lot of the things are quite obvious. There's those triggers that trigger anxiety and constant stress are, could be things that you eat. It could be your hydration levels. It could be, and it's more than likely this is the case because it's, it's chronic in today's society, is the phones and devices that we have. I'm going to start with the phones and devices for, for a minute. For the phones, if you are on your phones for long periods of time 
and then you put your phone down and then you start to warm up for your race or your training, you're setting yourself up for tightness. Research has shown the impact of devices on the body and what devices do is make sh it, it increases stress and anxiety. I mean, we know this even through research of, of younger adults when they try to sleep, how it compromises sleep. If it compromises sleep, it raises stress levels. That so we, we, we have to take that a kind of assumption. But once we actually you do that, your, your body is shutting down under stress and anxiety, not just because of the thoughts and the social media and the things you're thinking about from social media, from the things that you're reading online, on your phone, but also the physical activity, the electrical impulses in the, the phone are actually having an impact on your body, even when you hope your phone. There's an electrical, electrical activity going through your body without the phone. And when you've got an electrical device with you all the time, that's going to compromise that. So you have to understand that it's like the devices have an impact on our bodies, both by what we think about when we read it and also the physical nature of the phones as well. So we have to understand that. So once you're actually on your phones for long periods, you're stressing yourself out. And when you're stressing yourself out, you're, you're making yourself more anxious and you're going to making yourself more tight and you're creating the foundation for tight sprinting. So that's one of the major ways that we miss as a society. And then it's one of the things that we don't face up to for sports performances, the impact of what we do and how we live our life outside of our training. That is massive. And how we feel about ourselves it compromises how we feel about ourselves and our mood and everything. So one of the biggest things that you could possibly do is actually, instead of actually being on your phone before you train and compete, get off your phone an hour beforehand and be alone be before you, before you even warm up, is to be alone, away from your phone, do breathing techniques. Even meditation is the best, better way of doing this. Once you do that meditation or kind of breathing techniques or that, that I teach in this on this channel, you actually create the foundation for a kind of relaxed form, a kind of calm, serene nature that is going to activate your muscles and put you set best in the best foundation for you to sprint and compete. So that's one of the things. Cut down on your mobile activity, your device activity throughout the day. And this is very important if you want to be relaxed and you should want to be relaxed when you sprint. You want to be calm and serene when you sprint. You want to be free and feel good when you sprint. That's a massive thing. The other thing as well, obviously, hydration levels. Make yourself, a simple thing is getting um, hydration levels as an athlete is very important um, to make stuff that helps you feel more relaxed and more energized. If you go for 0.39 of 39 milliliters per kilo of your body weight, have that amount per day as an athlete, that's going to set you up well for it. And that's kind of a lot. That's kind of, it's going to be probably more than you would expected. For me, it's around three liters a day as a 79 kilo man. Um, so it, it, for you, it's going to be, it's probably going to be the hydration level is going to be higher there. So you put, have, that's one of the things to keep your hydration levels high. And also what the foods you eat, you need to have a food diary beside you and see what foods really make you stressed and anxious, what foods re you feel good on and what feel, foods that you don't feel good on. And also is what the, the thoughts you think throughout the day. Oh, what are you thinking about? I, when you're off your phone, you have to think about, are you in the present moment of breathing and actually bringing yourself back to yourself and feeling your body, feeling your body and concentrating your body is a simple technique that you can do to, to keep stress and anxiety at bay. And you've got to create that foundation outside your sprinting, outside your training for yourself to create that relaxation inside your training and competing. What you do outside is really important. And as I explain, through devices, through hydration levels, through food, thoughts, we compromise our relaxed state by all these things. And we actually put ourselves in a deficient state to sprint well. So those four things are really important to concentrate on outside of your sprinting. And they're really simple. What we do is what we find that it's actually things that we are doing that are actually compromising, not the things that we're not doing. And the things that we're doing because we're doing an overload of stuff. This is what's compromising our sprinting. So concentrate in those four areas. Once you concentrate in your four areas, you bring yourself back to your relaxed state. And from that relaxed state, then you have the best sprinting technique because you have the sprinting technique that's natural for you. 
relaxed state brings about natural movement for you. And once you have that, then you're gonna be sprinting at your fastest. So hopefully that video was helpful for you. Please like, please share, please. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.